Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. As we conclude with part 11 of Manly P. Hall's series on the Circle of the Holy Animals. The following is taken from the All Seeing Eye, Volume 5, September 1931, Number 12. Zodiac, the Circle of Holy Animals, continued. Pisces, the sign of the two fishies, which closes the circle of the holy animals, has been associated by both astrologers and philosophers from time immemorial with the concept of the ending or summing up of life and the world in their various aspects. The Egyptians recognized this constellation as signifying the end of the world, at which time all things would be dissolved in a great deluge or oblivion. To the Chinese, the twelfth sign also represented the periodic inundation of the world by means of which the way was prepared for a new beginning of life upon the planet. By the Hindus, Pisces was associated with the Kali Yuga, or last age, during which old orders crumble away and that which has failed is removed by nature and the way prepared for the establishment of new generations. In astrology, the sign is associated with bondage, limitation, and confinement. The fishies are tied together by their tails and, through swimming in opposite directions, cannot separate themselves. The sign is a constant reminder that man is ever in bondage to the lower aspects of his own nature, for which there can be no escape until the accounts of nature have been settled. The ancient Christians, adopting the sign of the fish as a hieroglyphic symbol of redemption, employed the figure to signify bondage to sin and iniquity. Christians recognized each other by drawing the form of a fish in the sand. This was also a significator, declaring oneself to be a hopeless sinner and as such was representative of the strange attributes developed in the early church in which the penitent glorified in his own less than nothingness. The principle involved seemed to be that the worse a man was, the more glory to the institution that could save him. This curious complex led Celsus to maintain that the new faith held out heaven to rogues and small reward to honest men. In this sense, the fish summarized all human failings and limitations as well as a relapsed condition, an appropriate figure for persons who were miserable for the glory of God. The history of flagellation and extreme austerities informs us that when through some curious streak of providence nature was momentarily kind, this weakness of the terrestrial sphere was corrected by visiting upon oneself and others artificially designed and cruelly fashioned forms of discomfort. St. Augustine likens Christ to a fish which is broiled for the sins of the world probably because of the cryptic ictus, which is derived from his name and title. This calls to mind that numerous divinities have been associated with the fish. Dagon, the Babylonian savior god, has the body of a fish and the head of a man. And Vishnu in his first avatar is shown rising from the mouth of a fish. This seemingly has reference to the beginning of life. For after every parleya, or night of the gods, the deity symbolized in the form of a great fish swims through the sea of eternity. The ancients recognized all life as rising from water, which was the common mother substance. The fish gods consequently referred to the celestial intelligences who existed at a time when a heavenly water filled the whole cavity of space. Even deity itself is sometimes referred to as a great fish and the story of Jonah and the well has been interpreted to mean that Jonah signified an aspect of the Noah legend. Jonah therefore signifies the seed of mankind. 
the ship from which he is cast is the old world which is to be destroyed divinity is the great fish which receiving the germ of life carries it through the deluge which destroys the world and finally upon the establishment of the new cycle cast it upon the shore where it becomes the progenitor of a new order of life regarding Pisces as signifying the end of enterprise regardless of its magnitude and also assuming with the Egyptians that the 12th sign was associated with karma or an accumulation of unfinished business carried forward through the cycle we next hear of its association with misfortune there is much question whether any sign of the zodiac should be allotted to rulers i.e. whether Aquarius should be assigned to rulers Saturn and Uranus two widely different forces or whether Jupiter and Neptune should share honors in rulership of Pisces Neptune is a planet strangely associated with the occult forces of nature and while it may not often bestow its appearance upon the Piscean native it most certainly bestows peculiarities of temperament and eccentricities of person most Piscean people are creatures of destiny or at least puppets of fate there is nearly always something mysterious or unusual about them and in many cases they are given to unaccountable depression and melancholy their lives are usually eventful in one way or another often involving sudden changes like Neptune they are very often revengeful and again like this planet inclined to keep their real feelings to themselves their words often having little to do with their thoughts Neptune again strikes them in their relationships to the occult or at least in their fondness for the mysterious the bizarre and their thrill for intrigue they are quite often mediumistic or clairvoyant and are almost certain to be surrounded during life with circumstances not explainable by the average man's philosophy as an old work on the subject says they are addicted to dreams fancies and even frenzies they are inclined to be secretive and are often tempted to evil habits or dangerous intrigues and crime in none of these qualities do they partake of the Jupiter and influence which is supposed to partly govern the sign nor are their finances as plentiful as generous Jupiter would be expected to bestow they are a worrying cast and the only point where Jupiter really shows himself in their outer appearance is in size and weight and through their inner temperament as generous if Pisces be accepted as a sign connected with the rounding up of a cycle of experience then it is easy to understand why Piscean people are seemingly continually confronted by responsibility and so-called misfortune the facts are that they are faced with the loose ends of their own lives in Pisces the individual is temporarily in bondage to the limitations of himself in this sign he must overcome in himself these conditions which through the other signs he has been attempting to overcome in the outer world it is a well-known fact that just before dawn vitality is the lowest upon the earth and in the horoscope Pisces represents that zero hour which precedes the dawn which is symbolically presumed to take place in Aries thus Pisces is the weakest point in the chart it represents the place where the energies of life have run down it has neither the strength combativeness nor the optimism which in some of the other signs literally bubbles over the Piscean native is born tired and lacking the vitality bestowed by more robust configurations may also lack the self-assurance which surmounts obstacles and defends its own rights Pisces bestows the peacemaker who is generally badly pummeled by both contending factions 
The world has just passed through a Pacinian cycle, and it has been a period of travail. Man's idealism and humanitarianism have been exploited to the utmost. Virtue has lost caste, and honesty has lost merit. The order of life has been hopelessly upset, and a certain despair has been bred in the subconscious strata of men's souls. But as the darkness of night gives place to the sparkling colors of the dawn, so the inhabitants of Pisces find expression in the spontaneous exuberance of Eris. The sun, having completed its cycle, begins a new one. Night gives place to day, hopelessness to hope, and the great will turns as before. In our cycle of spiritual progression, we are born again and again in each sign as the will goes round. When it comes time for us to be born in Pisces, we are brought face to face with the things which are as yet unfinished. This experience is necessary, for it gives incentive and purpose to future effort. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you very much.